Hi, Peter. It's so lovely to see you again. And thank you so much for taking the time to catch up with me. Pleasure, Jesse. Great to see you. So how are you? I'm well. I'm as well as you can be when you've been locked up for a, <laughs> for a number of months, as has everybody else. But no, I'm, I'm in good form and, uh, and I'm healthy. And um, yeah, looking forward to next week when we can uh, have some uh, freedoms return. So congratulations. Now, how does it feel to be acknowledged by your peers for your outstanding work and to receive such a prestigious award? Well, um, yeah, I was very honoured to receive. I got quite a surprise. I received a letter from the Chair of Catholic Schools New South Wales about two weeks before I received the award, which was only recently. And I was really, um, I was really honoured and, and, and I feel very privileged, um, mainly because it honours the profession um, and all those people who work in it. Um, the, the award's named after Brother Kelvin Canavan, uh, as, as you probably know, who's a, a Marist brother now in his 80s, but he's, um, oh, in my view, one of the uh, most significant Catholic educators uh, in the history of our country. And um, I worked uh, with him when I was in the Archdiocese of Sydney. He was the Executive Director of Schools. His focus was always on the importance of the teacher and the child and, um, and making a difference in the lives of, of children. And uh, I learned a great deal from him. So I was, I was very honoured to, uh, to receive it uh, in, in his name. But as I said, it honours the profession and all those great people who, who work in it. And uh, you know how much I love Catholic education and, yeah. and teaching and teachers and young people. And it just... It's great to accept it, if only to promote that, all the great things that happen in our schools. So what do you think? So you were in education for 45 years. Was it couldn't, have, couldn't have been that long. But yes, it was. Yes, it was. Yeah. I'm very, I started very young, though. I'm sure you did. <laughs> I wish I had. So what do you think was your biggest achievement during that, your career? I loved teaching when I started. I, I really enjoyed that. I felt that I made some progress as a teacher and I think I had some influence over young people. Um, I loved my, my, both my principalships. Um, they were both uh, schools that were commencing. They were new schools. And I loved the fact that I had the opportunity to work with teams of people who were like-minded and, um, and built the schools around the things that I think really matter. And I'm not talking about the bricks and the mortar, I'm talking about mm. the spirit and the life and the faith and the growth for young people. Uh, that would be it. And um, I loved my 13 years in Wollongong. I, uh, I was new to Wollongong and I didn't know what that would be like. And I'm sure people didn't know what I was going to be like, um, but I think uh, we made it work. and. Uh, I cherish those 13 years. Um, I, I learned so much from so many people and um, just enjoyed very much the life of the diocese and particularly the schools that I love. I still love them, they're great. And Peter, what do you miss most about it? I miss the people. I miss the interaction with the people. I miss the schools and uh, going to the schools. I miss the staff in the office and uh, talking with them about their work and the difference that it makes. And uh, uh, for me, it's always about that. Um, uh, I, I, I really um, love the interactions that we had, both formal and informal. Um, I really miss the opportunities that I had to work and meet with young teachers, particularly, uh, because I, I love their energy and their commitment uh, in their work. Um, but if I'm to sum that up, I miss the people mostly. Yeah. So speaking about the young teachers, like, you know, we've been through COVID, which is a bit of a tricky time, especially for some, a new teacher who's starting out. Sure. So what advice would you have for any young teachers? Hang in there would be, would be one. As you say, this has been a difficult 18 months, maybe a bit longer than 18 months. But... Um, and it's become increasingly uh, more challenging to be a teacher, both primary and secondary. Uh, my, I guess my number one piece of advice is 
not to ever lose sight of the fact that you make a difference in the lives of young people. Um, there's a child sitting in your classroom somewhere, and maybe you don't even know, who um, waits upon every word that you offer and the actions that you uh, carry out and, and what you model for them. And perhaps for that child, you're the only person in their life who does that. And uh, that's a great privilege. Mm -hmm. So never lose sight of the privilege, never lose sight of the difference that you make. So tell me, what has life been like for you and Yvonne since you retired? What have, how have you been spending your time and what have you been up to? When I finished uh, work, it was always my intention to do some work voluntarily. Um, yeah. and stay connected with education and, uh, and, and welfare, social welfare issues. So I've been able to do that. I, um, I was asked to join the, the Education Council of the Bathurst Diocese. Um, and I'm very conscious of the challenges of Catholic schools in remote areas, some of the remote areas in, uh, in, in Western New South Wales and uh, Moree and, and Forbes and Parks and all of those places. So I've, I've enjoyed being a part of that, making a contribution to that. Um, the Maris Education Council and the Edmund Rice Education Australia Council. So I've been doing some work with, uh, with them all via Zoom, uh, but that's been good. That stops my brain from going to mush. And um, so that's that's been great. And I'm looking forward to doing some work. I've, I've got an interest in uh, working down the track with uh, pack, uh, young uh, young offenders, youth offenders, okay. and uh, trying to do some work mentoring with those young people who perhaps uh, haven't had the opportunities that um, that others have had. So I, no, down the track, we look forward to doing that. But we've... Um, Look, it's been nearly two years since you set back from your role as director of schools um, and you're an active grandparent. And I've heard that you do the, when school was in, that you were doing the morning drop off and so forth. Being a grandparent and having your grandchildren in a school, how, do you now see schools in a different perspective? Um, I see schools... Uh, uh, becoming more challenging um, but the one thing that's a constant for me it's always been and teachers in our diocese particularly those who teach kinder year one year two would know that I think this uh, they do remarkable work I, my two grandsons one's in kinder and one's in year one so you know th they've had a pretty rugged start to their school life in yeah. having to be home and homeschooled and all the challenges that go with that but um, I, I think that the heroes of the pandemic are obviously the health workers and all those frontline workers, but the other heroes of the pandemic have been our teachers, uh, trying to assist parents to do remote learning, online learning. Um, and I've just seen some of the things that the teachers of my two little ones, that the lengths they've gone to, not just in terms of you know, their numeracy and their literacy, but some fun online if they can they've come up with some remarkable ideas about uh, connecting the kids and um yeah I, I i'm just i'm just amazed but not surprised at the um tenacity of our teachers and i'm sure teachers have uh i'm sure they're viewed a little differently by parents and caregivers now i'm sure that yeah. uh, home uh, home learning online learning stuff has really changed some uh perceptions about those in our profession and I'm very happy to be on the the drop off or pick up roster of a morning or afternoon like other grandparents and and to and to play that role um, but it's good it's good fun it's good fun too but I, I do I do worry about the little ones when they return to school after COVID um, they've, they've missed out on a whole range of things I know people will be anxious about what have they missed out in terms of literacy and numeracy, and rightly so. But we will have to be, as a society, very careful when all the children come back, young and old, both primary and secondary, that we give them an opportunity to resettle and to go mm -hmm. back into routine. Young people need routine, uh, little ones particularly, and they've been out of that. So um, we can't just launch into saying, well, let's get on with the learning. The learning is built upon uh, physical, emotional, mental well-being. So we need to check in on that um, in these weeks uh, when they come back in um, 
in the next couple of weeks. We need to be very conscious of that and look after our teachers and our office staff and all those people who are who are going to be dealing with anxious parents and um, caregivers. So just just to be conscious of all of that and not rush into saying, oh, we've missed out on a whole lot of things. Yes, we have, but we can't change any of that. You just have no. to take that as it is and deal with that and, um, and look after resettling these young people back into school. Well, you picked a good time to retire and poor Peter Hill sort of came in at a really tough time. Yeah. Being, you know, COVID started not that long after he was here. What words of advice would you have for him? Well, Peter has asked me, did I know something uh, in choosing the time of my retirement? And I've sworn on a lot of Bibles that I, that I didn't. Um, oh, Peter's an excellent leader. Peter um, has a great sense of what's needed. Uh, he probably doesn't need my advice. I have great confidence in, in Peter Hill. He's a fine man and um, doing a great job. And uh, uh, I, I uh, speak with him. You know, reasonably regularly we we chat uh about things uh just to check in on him see how he's going every now and again and uh, and we talk um and then he repeats his thing did you know this was all going to happen is that we keep saying that so i'll be worried about him there but now he, he's fine um he knows exactly yeah. where to take the diocese uh, the diocese is in very good hands in his so moving forward, as we come out of lockdown and prepare to return to face-to-face -face teaching, what advice do you have for us all? Uh, I guess it just relates to what I was saying earlier. Um, it's the same with um, teaching staff and, and support staff and the staff of the Catholic Education Office. Um, your worlds have been turned upside down as well. Um, and you're all working from home or working in very different sets of circumstances. I think um, how it's best able to be done, there's a real significance in becoming connected again and not just connected um, via, uh, via Zoom uh, to become personally connected. You know, the important thing about um, our work is that the relationships that, that exist and that's nobody's fault that they've, They've suffered uh, in recent months, but it would be important to do that and go gently with each other and uh, get used to being back in a different um, world of work and world of being and uh, not to lose sight of the fact that um, when people work together and know each other, well, it doesn't mean you have to love everyone, but you, you, you know, when you work together and understand each other and, um, and have a common cause, so revisit that common cause, revisit what matters most to, to the organisation and to the office and to the schools and, and then get back to those foundations. And uh, I think everything else flows from that. Mm. And so, Peter, when life returns to some sort of normal, what's the thing that you're looking forward to doing the most? I'm looking forward to seeing my family in person. Uh, and, and friends and, and just getting back to uh, being able to do some of the simple things uh, that you want to do when you want to do them, not, well, I've got, I've got an hour to do this or I can go there or I can't go there or I can't do this. So I just, I'll look forward to uh, the return of those, uh, those freedoms. Well, you sound like you've been really busy, which I'm not surprised at. And yeah. I'm so glad to hear that that 45 years of experience is still being tapped into um, and you're still connected to Catholic education. So that's really good to hear. Well, Josie, I wouldn't, I wouldn't ever you know, disconnect myself. It's part of, been such a significant part of my life. I really enjoy the fact now that I get to spend an increased amount of time with Yvonne and we get to talk and do things together. Um, but Catholic education has... Um, has been such an integral part of my life. I, yeah, if I if I distance myself from it, I wouldn't be the same person. I just can't do that. I mean, I've, I've loved it. I loved it, and uh, still do. And all those who engage in it. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, Peter, you know what? It's been an absolute pleasure to see you, and I really am so grateful that you've taken the time to chat with us. Uh, and my... congratulations on your award. It's really well deserved. Thank you very very much, and all my. All my best wishes to everybody in the diocese and in the school system and uh, 
all the best as uh, things start to slowly return to some form of uh, normality. I am always thinking of you, always. Uh, it's not a day goes by when um, you're not in my thoughts somewhere. <laughs>